<laughs> All right, we're gonna watch this video now called uh, How the Internet Travels Across the Ocean. I mean, I know how, like obviously, you know, most people know that there's like a giant ass wire that is like floating under the sea from one landmass to another, but I don't really know much about them actually, other than, you know, it's a cable that runs from there to there. So, to net traffic from this video to your Pokemon Go account to your family WhatsApp group runs on a hidden network of undersea cables. Why should you care? Because modern life is increasingly dependent on those slinky subaquatic wires, and they get attacked by sharks from time to time. How do they work? What's the future for them? Join us today as Let we me, plunge uh... the depth and ask how captions. the internet travels across oceans. Actually, I'm lying. Why don't we leave the captions on? Why not? I watch According captions, to the authoritative man. submarine cable map website, there are currently 493 active or actively under construction subsea in Wow. That's a lot more than I would have thought. I was thinking like just a group maybe of like, I don't know, four or five cables that like went from Newark, New Jersey or some like some some hub or whatever and, and just across, you know, to over here. But there's actually like lots of lines of them going across. Internet know, cables thought, crisscrossing man. the globe. Sure. These range from the relatively modest 300 kilometer Azerbaijan to Turkmenistan wire running okay. under the Black Sea to the, the absolutely sea. gargantuan 6,600 kilometer Marea cable. Wow. 6,600 kilometers. What is that in just like miles? Because I'm American. Alexa, what is 6,600 kilometers in miles? It's 4,100 miles. 4,100 miles. Linking Virginia Beach wow. in the U.S. with Bilbao in northern Spain. Oh, Maria wow. weighs the same as 24 blue whales, apparently. The firms laying wow. down this serpentine superhighway worldwide, whales. there's now 1.5 million kilometers of undersea data wires, are cagey about how much it all costs. But professional estimates Estimates indicate a typical transoceanic cable should set you back between three and four hundred million. Holy! Sh Imagine you have like a big crew working on this boat and they're out at seas for a long time. Like I don't know how long it takes, but that's a lot of money. Three to four hundred million. Millions of dollars, which seems like a, a lot because they're not especially thick. Typically around the girth of a garden hose. Wait, they're only the size of a. What? They're only the size of a garden hose? And that includes layers of protective thixotropic jelly around the all-important wow. fiber optic core, plus multiple okay, plastic okay. sheets and copper wiring to power the thing. But even wow. so, on average, they Wait, that... That looks bigger than a size of a garden hose, so I'm confused. Are they just then wrapped in a bunch of other... Like, is it saying, like, the main part of the cable is the size of a garden hose? Can ferry an awesome 100 gigabytes per second in... Yeah, because that hose definitely looks... I mean, that looks like... Maybe not, though. I don't know. kind of looks like... I was going to say hand railing size. Like, if you look at the hand railing down here in the bottom right... I mean, that's closer, though. So, I don't... Yeah, I don't data, know, actually. With newer and forthcoming cables to able me. to transmit 400 gigabytes per second. So, how does... 400 gigabytes per second. Woo! So much data... It's the new ones coming? ...to fit down such slim Four channels. Times. Part of the answer is an extremely sophisticated... Oh, wow. That is small. <laughs> okay. There we have a picture, you know, of, of size. That's what she said. She's never said that to me. Okay. She has said that to me. No. <laughs> Anyways, getting back on track. That is a small cable. I'm, I'm shocked, man. Cated data wrangling technique known as dense wavelength division multiplexing. Okay, Put okay. simply, dense wavelength division multiplexing lets data providers use more than one wavelength of light to convey information fiber optically. Instead, okay. several wavelengths are employed simultaneously and stacked, creating astonishing data speeds. This happens at buzzing, data center like landing sites at either end of the cable. Are the cables just straightforward long wires? Not quite. Every 70 to 100 kilometers. Oh yeah, that is like the size of a garden hose. That's crazy. There's also along the seabed, cables are punctuated with so-called repeaters. These essentially serve as amplifiers. Okay, that makes sense. Keeping the signals... How does a repeater work? ...and up to par over long distances. That's why the cables incorporate copper conductors, by the way, carrying up to 10,000 volts of DC to power the repeaters. How are the cables laid? They're first coiled into vast cylindrical drums on specialized cable-laying ships. As much as a year's planning and charting will go into plotting the perfect trans-oceanic well, route. Bad why. location... 
Starting to see why it costs that much. <laughs> if it takes a year just to plan this shit out, starting to understand that three, four hundred million. Options for undersea cables include anywhere volcanic or anywhere especially earthquake or mudslide prone, or anywhere heavily trawled by fishermen. The cable is spooled out the back of the ship at a sedate pace of around 10 kilometers an hour. If the ship encounters bad weather, the captain can decide whether to break off the cord, tie it to a buoy, and retreat to calmer waters. When the storm passes, the ship returns to the buoy and picks up where it left off. Accidents and outages on the cables can and do occur. That's kind of cool that they can pick right up where they, where they left off, like when it's sheaved like that or whatever. In 2012, Hurricane Sandy in the US knocked out several key transatlantic cables, disrupting mm. networks for hours. In 2011, the Fukushima earthquake in Japan caused similar online carnage. The vast majority of such disruptions, however, are the result of human carelessness, typically trawler nets or wayward ship's anchors. Cables situated close to the shore are significantly more at risk from such disruption. As such, the nearer to land a cable is, the more likely likely it'll be carefully armor-plated. Many are even dug into the seabed in long, dedicated trenches, carved out using ship-drawn plows. Awesomely, sharks have been spotted nibbling on one of Google's subsea cables. Get your teeth into this 2014 clip. More sinister what? even than that. Why they be messing with that? Leave our internet alone, you damn, those are probably Chinese sharks. The US government has consistently warned of interference in the cables from oh hostile <laughs> foreign powers like Russia or China. The joke. US government should know all about that. Whistleblower Edward Snowden- I should say probably the Chinese government. They're the bad, I mean, Chinese people are fine. revealed in 2013 how the NSA had no qualms eavesdropping on fiber optic communications. The geopolitical implications of undersea cables are also fascinating. Last year, the Australian government intervened to prevent Chinese technology giant Huawei from installing a cable connecting Australia with the Solomon Islands. The fear is that China could use the link to gain access. See, I, I called it big brain. Access to Australia's sensitive internal networks. So who actually owns these cables? That's an interesting question. It's an expensive business, so historically nations or quasi-national telecom providers have picked up the bill. The world's biggest owner of cables remains America's AT&T, with a stake in some 230,000 kilometers wow. of undersea cable. The second biggest owner is China Telecom. Frequently, cables are owned by groups or consortia of up to 50 separate owners, including tech firms, local government agencies, and other businesses. And while this model helps spread the initial cost, it's less helpful when something goes wrong and nobody can agree who has to put on a wetsuit and do something about it. Increasingly, Big Tech is recognizing its scope for growth is limited by the undersea cable network. So over the- Oh wow, so we're basically maxing out what's there right now? I mean, it would make sense if it's a hundred gigabytes per second. I mean, that's a lot, but... And I mean, now you're like talking about people having like a gigabyte network in their home, right? So that's like a hundred gigabyte net home connections per wire. And there's only like, I mean, uh, you can start to see it. I mean, if you start thinking about it, I mean, obviously you're not sending as much data overseas as you would be using like in your own country, you know, so somebody with a one gigabyte max, I mean, they're not using one gigabyte all the time, probably rarely, but with video and everything nowadays, definitely makes sense. The past few years, the overwhelming majority of investment in undersea cable infrastructure has come from companies like Facebook, which currently owns nearly 100,000 kilometers of cables. Google owns roughly the same amount. Amazon has its own massive private network, hooking up the online giant's mighty AWS data centers through cables traversing the Atlantic, Pacific, and Indian Oceans, plus the Mediterranean, and the Red Sea, and the South China Sea. The Jeez. tech giants like to frame these vast environmentally disruptive infrastructure projects as civilization enhancing largesse on their part. But they're also shareholder companies, remember, who know perfectly well that increasing the number of human beings online is the only way they can continue to grow. Hang on a second, you're probably thinking, what about Starlink? Isn't our old mate Elon about to make the internet wireless any day now? For now, cable is by far the cheapest and most efficient means of yeeting- Yeah, I was- I'm kind of curious. I didn't even think of that, but I wonder how much it costs Starlink to send up one satellite. Like, I is it actually way cheaper? Does it cost? I feel like for three, four hundred million nowadays, with where SpaceX and stuff is at, I feel like you could launch a lot of satellites. And I don't know what it takes to like keep them going. That's interesting. Getting vast packets of data over incredibly long distances fast. Even normally bullish Musk says Starlink is only aimed at people who don't presently enjoy access to high-speed fiber. But who knows how that'll pan out in a decade or two? 
For right, now, the future is very much undersea cables. Only okay. this summer, Google and Facebook announced a joint initiative to build an undersea cable named Apricot. Apricot will link up Singapore, Japan, Guam, the Philippines, Taiwan, Ooh, and Indonesia by the nice. year 2024. The longest subaquatic cable ever, a 45,000 kilometer billion dollar monster called wow. To Africa that will link up 33 nations, was just bankrolled by a Facebook led consortium. What do you think? Will one billion dollars. Mankind's ingenious submarine network one day look as obsolete as the telegraph. Let us know. In I mean, I guess that's not that much money when you think about that you now have trillion dollar companies. I mean, I don't know if they're valued at right now with where the market and everything's at. And I don't know if they'll ever get back to that point, but they at least hit million, you know, trillion dollar in territory. the comments. And don't forget to subscribe for more totally wired tech content. Yo, that was very cool. I never knew how the internet traveled across the ocean. So very cool how that how that works or whatever. I mean, again, I knew it was cables but I did not realize they were the size of a garden hose. And I did not realize, I mean, really there aren't that many then for, for the size of a garden hose. What, 476 or something like that I said? I don't know. Anyway, super interesting video. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'm live every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Come, come watch some stuff with us, play some games, hang out. Also, don't forget to like this video, hit the subscribe button. See you guys on the next one. Until then, peace out, everybody. Later, nerds.